behind me, I'm going back to the 1928 in Pat Blakeney Edwards' Fraser Nash. It's got about 130 horsepower. I've never driven anything as old as this. It's got a different gearbox selection on it, um, fixed rear axle. He said it hasn't even got a rev counter on it, so rev it until it goes. It looks very old, it looks very simple, but he said it actually goes really well, and he said it's all about corner speed. Something like this obviously isn't going to be very quick in a straight line, but it's about carrying the momentum, not over slowing and over braking the car, and trying to carry that momentum then through onto the next straight. There's lots of quick cars here today, not many mirrors on it, so I'll be looking around, obviously trying to stay out of people's way. But he said really just rag it, really thrash it and get the most out of it. I've got a few ideas what it would be. I can't quite get my head around what a car from 1928 would feel like, let alone trying to drive it and rag it around on a racetrack. So um, there's only one way to see what it's like, and that's to get out there, get my lid on and get stuck into the, the Fraser Nash. I think it's going to feel very basic, I think it's going to feel very old, quite agricultural in the sense I would imagine with the gearbox. I would think it isn't going to feel very quick. It's drum brakes all round, he said, which are pretty good. So not like modern cars, which are disc door iron with big six pot calipers. This is really simple, probably about as simple as you can get. I just said, I, to me it feels like it's going to tip over. Yeah, it won't. But it, I don't know if it's just the size of tyres, but like as soon as it slides, it, it, I'm just... <laughs> is, it, is, it, um, is it too hard, do you think? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it's 1928, the tyres are kind of this wide, and the steering wheel has a bit of flex in it, the seat has a bit of flex, no seat, but it feels so open. I think it's made it a little bit worse because there's lots of quick cars here today come flying past you. I just couldn't, I couldn't enjoy it, <laughs> if I'm honest. That I, I think if you're more comfortable with it, you can allow the car to slide and then it becomes a little bit more natural feeling. I was quite tensed up and the kind of the width of the tyre, or the feeling of the width of the tyre was putting me off a little bit. In the sense it felt quite top heavy. So it would slide and I'd correct it and it would have a good old twitch. So it just didn't inspire confidence. This just felt like it was trying to bite me all the time and I was pretty nervous of it. Not the quickest thing in a straight line. It, you know, you've got to rev the absolute nuts off it to get it going. Uh, any, anything like sensible down a straight line, but I just couldn't attack the corners as enough or as much as I probably should in a car like this. It's 100% the oldest car I've ever driven. I probably won't be rushing to drive a car like it again <laughs> anytime soon, if I'm honest. And, and watching the guys at Revival drive this era of car the way they do, I've got utmost respect now to see that because they really press on and they really try and go for it. And they're pretty brave. Either brave or stupid. And having met Pat, I think he's a bit of both. <laughs> 